Greetings, welcome to a Deckard Games YouTube thing. And today we are going to do a downgrade on my Pentium 1 build that hopefully will result in a upgrade. If you saw my video on building my Pentium 1 machine or rebuilding my Pentium 1 machine, you would know that my original 24 speed creative CD-ROM drive blew up on the making of that video and uh, now I'm using a 48 speed which is much newer than the rest of the hardware so we have to take care of this also the sound was not the best we are using a R32 plug and play and the sound quality isn't by far uh, the best uh, um, it just doesn't sound right also the speakers that I was using were not in the best quality whatsoever. Still, we are going to um, swap the sound card, swap the author 2 We are also going to swap the CD-ROM drive and do an upgrade with a lovely CD burner. And we'll get to it in a minute and uh, see if we get some better audio quality from this little machine and a CD-ROM that fits the time period a little better. So we are going to replace that 48-speed CD-ROM drive with this 36-speed, again from Creative Labs, since I absolutely love creative stuff. Um, back in the day, as I said in my first video, I had a 12-speed CD-ROM drive with a remote control. This one is from um, 1999. It is not as old as I would like, but it makes me feel a little better to use this one instead of the 48-speed one. And again, we are going with a creative drive, which is such a classic, and I feel a little better to use this one. This will be our first downgrade on our Pentium 1 build. Second thing that we are going to use, a lovely CD writer from Hewlett Packard. This was a donation to the channel from João Matos, a viewer and supporter of the channel. And I thank you for that, sir. And uh, this was my first CD burner that I had back in the day. It's a two-speed CD recorder. When he um, reached out to me, I thought this was the, the eight-speed. But no, when it got here, in fact, it is the two-speed CD-ROM drive or CD writer and it's the exact model that I had back in the day I remember paying a ton of money for this back in the day or my parents paid it for it and then um, I was like a god at school or something like that with everybody asking me to record this game or that uh, album or whatever you know uh, absolutely legit stuff and um, I'm so, so happy to have my very first CD writer uh, back in my uh, Pentium 1 build. This is from uh, December of uh, 1997. And again, such a classic CD writer from Hewlett Packard. I'm very pleased to have this one once again, and we are definitely going to put it into my Pentium 1. Last but not least, we are going to swap our Author 2 with this lovely Sound Blaster 16 model CT2230 from 1994. This one has OPL capabilities. This is such a classic card. Nothing much to say about the Sound Blaster 16 series, especially this, these models with the OPL ship in it and uh, hopefully we will get a much better sound quality with this one rather than the author 2 which was all over the place i don't know what happened so let's put all those things inside of our pentium one and see if we get any kind of improvement from it and so the first thing that we are going to do is to swap out our author 2 with the sound blaster 16 which is as simple as to take the authority 2 out 
we have to remove our audio cable like so and we just put in into the slim slot our sound blaster 16 again this is such a classic card that I'm hoping for some way better audio quality so it's in there and we just secure it in place with the same screw we are not wasting anything so with our sound blaster 16 in place we have to plug in our audio cable which is different on the O32 we were using this one the four pin and now we are going to use this one on the sound blaster 16 like this and this goes up to the CD-ROM drive but before we do that let's replace our CD-ROM drives and install our CD writer from Hewlett Packard and to replace the drive we just disconnect the ID and power cable which doesn't want to come out okay and then we unscrew it so we can swap our drive so this 48 speed is from oh, it's it's also from september of 1999 uh, so i said I was feeling a little bit better because this one, the 36 speed would be older. The, the, the 36 speed is from January of 1999 and our 48 speed is from September of 1999. Uh, okay, <laughs> so it's only a few months older or younger in this case since we are going with the 36 speed um but yeah yeah again yeah. the design itself makes me feel a little bit better when using the 36 speed rather than the 48 although when my 12 speed cd-rom drive um uh, crapped out uh, I swapped it for a 52 speed, an unbranded 52 speed CD ROM drive, which read um, something like 70% of the CDs that I put in it, and the other 30 just um, would laugh at me, but whatever. So, CD ROM drive is uh, unscrewed. Let's put Let's push up our cable and it's out of the PC case. So we need to remove this front bay cover. I don't want to break it like that. Pretty much yellow. This is charisma from the 90s. You, you just can't uh, find stuff like this anymore. It's, it is just awesome look at that almost white almost beige color i approve and now we slide our new drives in place i'm going to put the cd recorder on the bottom something like that yeah it's a little dirty and secure it in place We just tighten those screws. We want it nice and secure. And next we place our 36 speed CD-ROM drive from Creative. Uh, full disclaimer, I haven't tested 
any of these drives, so uh, hopefully they will work. And like the other, we just have to secure it in place. Two screws, same thing on the other side, and it's time to connect some cables from the motherboard to the CD-ROM drive and the audio cable also. So we have our drives in place. Time to connect some cables. We are going to replace our IDE cable, which was a one channel only cable. And we need to now. First, we are going to. Uh, let's see, we are going to plug in the audio cable or try to. Let's see if it gets. almost doesn't make it to the drive itself so audio cable connected uh, let's connect uh, what now our power we are running out of space here holy crap I should have done this before I screwed the drives in, into place. This one in here. Okay. So power cables are connected. And now we need an IDE cable with two channels. And although we could use a standard ID cable. There's too much cabling going around. We are going to use a slimmer one because it makes me feel a little bit better. So let's just pass this down. Seriously? Uh, do I have to remove the drive for do, to do this? Almost got it. Almost. Okay, there we are. And the other one. Also. Yeah, it's a mess. Look at that. Beautiful mess from the, the 90s. So, power is connected. Our IDE cable is hanging in here. Audio cable is also connected. And the only thing left to do is to plug our IDE cable into our board. It is stuck somewhere. I think it's on the heatsink. Yeah. So it goes in like this. Yeah, I think it's in place. So ID cable in place, audio cable also in place, everything else we leave it like it is. Again, our 90s cable management. That's why I went with the slimmer cable for our drives because it's, it's way too many cables. One thing that I forgot to mention in the last video, that you probably saw, I've had a fan in here, which was originally in the case, it was an intake fan, and I've put it in here with some zip ties, just a very quick job. And uh, this was because the heat sink was running a little bit hot, which is uh, good and bad news at the same time. Good news because the thermal pad uh, beneath the heatsink is uh, doing its job. It's transferring heat from the CPU to the heatsink itself. And it's bad news because although back in the day I would be fine with this, uh, temperatures were not a big deal back in the day, nowadays it makes me feel a little bit better to have a fan uh, pointing to the heatsink pushing up the little air that it can to cool the heatsink down so yeah 
just a fan secured with two zip ties blowing into the heat sink and that's it our sound blaster 16 is in place our cd-rom drive and cd writer are also in place hopefully they will work again they are untested fingers crossed so let's plug everything and uh, test our new hardware So everything is in place, we have our CD-ROM, our CD-Writer and our Sound Blaster 16, so let's power the PC and see if things are detected or not. So we have our hard drive, which is the same. And our Creative CD 3630E and our HP CD Writer 7200 Plus. And we have our CMOS battery error because I haven't fixed this. Let's turn our speakers on. Just because. Well, we have light on our drives, which is always good. Okay, we have two drives. Okay, we have drive D and drive E. Apparently we have no sound. Yeah, we have a few things to install. Yeah, no sound card. <laughs> Our CD-ROM opens. Looks so flimsy. Looks, looks fragile. We have to be careful with that. We'll check in a moment if it reads or not. Oh my God, it is so slow. Just like I remember. The CD writer also opens. It's so, so silent, so look at this. Holy crap. So I have no drivers for our Soundblaster 16, so I burned the CD. And this gives us the opportunity to check if the CD-ROM drive is working or not. Because again, they are untested. Let's hope it does. Uh, we have nothing for now. It's trying. Come on. Okay, some Blaster 16. <laughs> Looks like an airplane taking off. Oh, some Blaster. Let's install the audio software. Jesus. Just listen to our CD drum. These are more sounds from the 90s. So let's install our drivers and whatnot. And uh, I don't know if this will be quick or not. I'll install everything and we will be right back. Oh, Stone Blaster 16. Such, such a classic from Creative. And apparently it is Creative Blaster certified, which is awesome. Oh, by the way, we also have some Altec Lansing speakers now. 
I have to check my Primax Soundstorm. To see what's going on with him. Or with them. Uh, nope. The online service guide for your audio software has been installed on your system. Thank you. Uh, what about drivers? So it installed a lot of software but no drivers? Apparently. Yeah. Still no sound card. Now, of course, we didn't have any sound whatsoever because this is a Sound Blaster 16 and it's a non plug and play Sound Blaster 16, so it needs to be initialized and whatnot. And I completely forgot about it, so we should have sound now, so let's check it out. There we are. Now we have some Sound Blaster 16 sound in Windows 95, along with all the applications that installed. We have our classic Creative Mixer, which will need, will be not. We won't be messing around with it because we can't do anything. Let's see what else we have. Creative Remote, oh yes. A remote in your screen, very useful stuff from Creative, or uh, maybe not. We also have, let's see, ooh, Dictionary. Some, sp ooh, some spelling. Say it, get. Game. What? A little bit louder. Deckard Games. Deckard Games, oh yes. Pentium one rules. It rules indeed, I agree with you. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe. Subscribe. To the Subscribe. <laughs> Alright. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Oh yes. So we have our sound card installed. By the way, our CD-ROM drives are working and the CD writer is so smooth. Opening and closing, it's a different quality. So as I was saying, we have a, our Sound Blaster installed now. And the main purpose is, of course, for games. There's not much that I want to do in Windows. So let's go into DOS and uh, test our sound card. So the first thing that we are going to try out is, of course, Duke 3D. Because Duke Nukem 3D is such a classic sound on DOS. Let's see how it sounds. Oh yeah. I can already notice some improvement. Yes. Oh yeah, much better. Let's rock, Let's rock indeed. to the king. No, 
Now this sounds a lot better. So yeah, it is sounding a lot better. Let's try something else just to be sure, something like... Um, so let's try... I don't know, let's try Raptor. Great shooter. With some great sound. loud oh yeah but it, it is sounding awesome now this sound blaster 16 is way better than the r32 especially for dos games So let's try out some more great sounds on DOS. So let's try out some Destruction Derby that in my last video was crapping out all over the place. The sound, of course. And let's see how it goes with the Sound Blaster 16. So at least we have sound now. Oh, so much man. So much memories playing Destruction Derby on the Oz. So yeah, let's try something else. Sound is working. Let's try another game. Try for example. Let's try terminal velocity.
great sound. Just listen to this. Now this is some great DOS sound. Oh yeah, great sound on DOS, our Altec Lansing speakers are also working great, so yeah, this, is, this was a very very nice improvement or upgrade to our Pentium 1 build and I'm very pleased with it. So let's just, once again, to finalize stuff, let's rock some uh, Duke Nukem music and uh, leave this video as is. Man, you gotta love this Sound Blaster 16 sound with its real OPL3, a bug-free MPU 401, balanced PCM to FM and low noise. It is such a great sound card for good old DOS gaming and it also works great on Windows 95. I am very happy with this sound upgrade. And that Hewlett Packard CD writer is also awesome. I was not expecting to have my very first CD recorder back in my Pentium 1. It was a pleasant surprise indeed. So if you enjoy classic PC things Leave this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel since I cover a lot of more stuff that you can enjoy. And as always, thank you very much for watching this and until my next video, I'll leave you with some Thermonal Velocity tunes.